So I'll put this up right now so you can see it. You're gonna wanna have three different columns. That way if you wanna put this in your notes, you can. The first one, what form is the first one in? Standard form. That is standard form. And so um, we need to figure out how to get the AOS. What's the formula for finding the AOS? The AOS is X equals negative B. I've been seeing not the negative when I've been correcting your work. It's negative B over 2A. And if I'm looking at the formula, I see A is 1, B is 6, and C is 2. A, B, and C That's where we're getting those numbers from. So we have X equals negative stays there, and B is a positive number. If B was negative, you'd have double negatives here. But B is 6 over 2 times 1 for A. So negative 6 divided by 2 is exactly what Evan said. X equals negative 3. That's my AOS. It's a vertical line. That means I give it the equation right there. That exactly describes a vertical line. I am having my lines go by twos. Two, negative three. And I sketch my vertical line. That's the AOS, the axis of symmetry. And I label it x equals negative 3. No points off when I label my AOS. I know the parabola lands on the AOS because it splits it in half. The next thing I'd want to look for is my vertex. And I already know that x is negative 3 on the vertex. It lands on the AOS. I already know that. So if I take my negative 3 and I substitute it into the function, it's going to tell me what that y value is that I need. So I have in parentheses negative 3 is being squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 2. My vertex, therefore, when x is negative 3, I got negative 7. Negative 3, negative 7 is my vertex. Label my vertex, negative 3, negative 7, so I don't get any points off. I need one more point. Let's see. We could go for the y-intercept. I could go for 1. I could go for any point, but the y-intercept is always a good idea because they always want to know what the x and y-intercepts are. So we're going to go for the y-intercept. And how do I find the y-intercept? There you go, when x is 0. So there it is, set up, when x is 0. So f of 0 equals what? I can see it in standard form. Don't make the mistake of thinking you can see the y-intercept c when you're in two other forms. You can't. You've got to do number crunching to find it. But here, I can see that 0 squared is 0, 6 times 0 is 0, so that's 0 plus 0 plus 2. I can always see it in standard form. All right, so 2. And now I can use that symmetry. I am 3 units away, and so I'll be 3 units away on the left. And then I can draw that parabola. y-intercept was 0, 2. Is this a maximum or minimum? It's a minimum. What is the minimum? The vertex is the minimum, right? That'd be the lowest it goes. And how about the domain of this function? What is the domain for this parabola? Yes, of course, that's in the domain, but that's not the full domain. The domain is like, where does it exist? Is there a place it doesn't exist? Am I looking at the y values or the x values for domain? What are we looking at? We're looking at the x values. So domain means... So I take my pen and I'm going like this. Does the parabola exist over here? It says it's going out, 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 out. It's forever going out. So is it going to be over here? Yes, because it's going out, 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 out forever. And it's doing the same thing on the left. It's going out, out, out. 
That means the parabola is getting wider and wider and wider and going out to infinity that way. So that would be all the reals, but in algebra two, we would say it's going from negative infinity to positive infinity. Interval notation. Interval notation. Okay, negative infinity to positive infinity, and you use rounded brackets when it doesn't include, like, how do you stop infinity? Can you stop it at some place? That's why it has to be rounded brackets, because you can't stop it. You can't just grab a place and say, that's infinity. We're going to see what square brackets look like as well. How about the range? From least to greatest, where's the range? The range has to do with the y value. What do you think, Duborn? Very good. So it starts here at negative 7. And then it goes to positive infinity because it's going up, 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 up. It's going out and up. So that means, does it include negative 7? Is the parabola at negative 7? Yes, it is. So I'd use a square bracket and put negative 7 to infinity with a rounded bracket. And that is fully understanding the parabola from standard form. This is what you need to do for parabolas. Exactly everything that's on there, those are all the characteristics of what a parabola is. You can find all that stuff, you're golden. If you can find all that stuff in three different forms, you're going to be good for the test because this is what our first test in Chapter 1 is going to look like. We're taking a test after factoring in 1.3 and 1.4. We'll take a test on these three forms. Okay, It'll be part no calculator, part calculator. You have to demonstrate you can do both. All right, function 2. What form is this one in? It's in vertex form. I wonder what would be the first thing I'd want to look for in vertex form. It's named vertex form, so vertex would be a good place to start. Raise your hand. Where is the vertex at? What do you got, Mary? Exactly. It's negative 5 and positive 4. The formula, x minus h squared plus k, the formula, x minus h squared plus k, has a negative sign in it. It negates the sign of h. So when I see positive 5, it's negative 5. When I see negative 5, it's positive 5. So my vertex is at negative 5, positive 4. So one, these are going by 2s, okay? Negative 5, positive 4. There's my vertex. It's named vertex form. It was great to look for the vertex first. And if I have the vertex, I also have the, the AOS. Where's the AOS then? It's going right down through negative 5. X equals negative 5. I've labeled it. AOS is X equals negative 5, the equation of a vertical line. All right, next thing would be we just need one point, and then we can use that symmetry. We're going to go for the y-intercept, and that would be when you're letting x equals 0. So you need to do a little bit of number crunching here. f of 0 equals negative so 5 squared is 25, and then there's a negative out front for negative 25 plus 4. The y-intercept would be 0, negative 21. Obviously, my graph's not going to go down to negative 21. So if I simply label my graph and I pick a point that seems reasonable and say that this is negative 21, I put it on my graph. That's negative 21. There's no questions whatsoever when the teacher looks at your work and they know you know where that y-intercept is. All right, using symmetry now. So I am one, two, five units away. So does it make sense it's facing downwards? Matt, why does it make sense that it's facing downwards? It's got a negative out front of it that tells us that's going to be a maximum. It's facing downwards. It's the highest it can go. Maximum. Then we need to talk about the domain and range. What's the domain? It is. It's going out, 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 out to infinity. So that would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then we need the range from least to greatest. 
negative but go least to greatest it would be from negative infinity to four so negative infinity to positive four does it include four so that means it's a square bracket for four the last form is what the next two sections are about we need to learn how to factor and get it into these parentheses once it's in these parentheses then I can use factored form so they're going to give you standard form and you're going to have to factor it in 1.3 and 1.4 it's already factored for us. So intercept form. All right, so where's the first place that we should start on this one then? The, the x-intercept. So we're looking at x-intercept. So you take your factors, x plus 6, x plus 2, and the zero product property says that I can take that factor and set it equal to zero and solve. So we get x equals negative 6 and x equals negative 2. So the x-intercepts would be at negative 6, 0 and negative 2, 0. They're intercept. They're intercepting exactly one place. That's a coordinate. There's negative 2. Here's negative 6. Those are coordinates. What do you think is going to be halfway between those intercepts? The AOS is always halfway between. That's why when you do the AOS, does anybody know the formula for AOS right off the bat? What do you got, Leah? P plus Q divided by 2 equals the AOS this time. And P and Q are those factors. So that's negative 6 plus negative 2 divided by 2. Negative 8 divided by 2, we get X equals negative 4 for the AOS, which is exactly what we just predicted. I said, what's halfway between your intercepts? You said the AOS. Here's my AOS. X equals negative 4. And then once I have that AOS number, then I can find the vertex. So x equals negative 4. Finding the vertex would be just substituting that value in. Vertex is going to be f of negative 4, which would be negative 4 plus 6 times negative 4 plus 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So the vertex is at negative 4, negative 4. There is negative 4, negative 4 for my vertex. Do I need the y-intercept? No, I've got enough points right now to be able to graph that. So unless the question specifically asked for y-intercept, notice this time it just said intercepts. It didn't say y-intercept. Is this a maximum or a minimum? Minimum, the lowest it will go, it's the min. What is the domain for this parabola? It's all the reals again, negative infinity to positive infinity. The range from least to greatest is what? Negative four to infinity. It includes negative four for a square bracket. So let's say that this is a paper that you'd really like to have in your notes, but there's no pages left for your notes. You could do something like this, like this page right here was just um, some notes on the AOS. This comes after your max and min page. You could, all I did was I just taped the top part right here. Let's zoom out. So I tape just the top so that I could actually open this up and be able to look at it. But I don't really need what's under there now because we know about AOS. So if you wanted to have this in your notes for a time when it's time to take a test, then you can put standard form, vertex form, intercept form, fold it in half. And all I did was just tape the top part and put it in there. Next year.